Hello everybody, this is Ariane Arsenault. Welcome to my workshop. I am in Quebec, Canada, uh, in the Magdalen Islands precisely. Today I am welcoming you aboard as I am making some mini candle thins for the holidays. Actually, many of these will be going into our 12 days of Christmas advent calendars. And I wanna show you the process of making these right here. To make these candles, I'm actually doing a home blend of waxes. So this is the C6 by Cargill, and they sent me a sample box uh, last winter so that I could test, and I did. And um, this is a soy wax with a little bit of uh, coconut wax. And I'm also adding some more coconut wax, which is the Coco 83, um, just 10% combined with this one because I find that it makes some very smooth tops. I'm going to get this wax to melt and we will be back to add the fragrance and pour. I absolutely love these mini candle thins. Uh, I bought these from various sources, but some of them I bought through Unique Packaging that has been sold recently, but the company still exists. It's called uh, Twisted Sisters Packaging. And the other half I bought from Candles and Supplies last winter. So it's, they're, they're mixed together, but some of them are from both places. So I'm just gonna open them all up and then I'm going to center the wicks uh, and get the, the thins ready to receive the wax. I'm going to take my wick stickers and remove one side of the adhesive and then I'm going to apply all of my wicks on them before centering them in the thins. If you're a candle maker, you're probably going to wonder what wicks are these? Because on camera, all wicks look like wicks. <laughs> so these are actually HTP 105. Um, they work well for candles with a diameter of 2.5 to 3 inches. And this is 2.5. Um, they're also great for soy wax, so this is why I chose these. So the first thing I do is I straighten my wax because after being packaged, they sometimes have like a, they're bent a little bit like this. So I try to straighten them out and then I place them on the adhesive and just with my eyes, I try and center these as best as I can. To melt my wax, I am using a direct heat method, uh, but I do this always monitoring, stirring often, and never leaving the wax unattended. I also have some wax melters, but they're at my seasonal shop right now, so I haven't brought them back yet, which is something I need to do. <laughs> now to make sure that my wicks stay straight and in position, I'm gonna use the wick centering tools. I get these from Canwax. Please stop asking me and look, to the link <laughs> below the video. Every time I post a picture of my candle making, everybody wants to know where I got my little centering tool. So there you have it. Thank you, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but they are, they are a very practical tool. And they have different sizes. These are the small ones, so they fit very snug uh, around my little fins. And then you have a little security clip and uh, they are made of plastic, but I've had these for like 15 years. I've never broken one so far since I've had them. We just keep reusing them over and over again. So thanks, Canwax. <laughs> this is not sponsored. <laughs> I absolutely love this fragrance oil. It smells so good. I've been using it for years. Sadly, my previous supplier couldn't ship to Canada anymore. 
and Be Scented were super helpful. They had it duped and now they carry it in their store. So you too can buy it. It's, it's amazing. It just smells like sweet and tart and bitter cranberries, just sweet enough, but it's, you gotta smell it. <laughs> I love it. I think everybody here loves it. For 24 little candles, I am coloring with a magenta color, also by Canwax. I am using just two drops for this batch because it's a very potent colorant. The best trick to test a candle color is to simply uh, drop a drop on a little piece of white paper and wait for it to set and then this is going to give you your final candle color. Because this is a blend of soy and coconut wax, I like to add my fragrance oil at a rather high temperature, so between 180 to 190 degrees. And then I'm going to stir for a few minutes and pour. That's the easy and fun part. Mm. Oh, so while we did the fragrance oil, look at that. The wax has hardened up and this is the pink that we're going to get for this cranberry candle. If we wanted it darker, we could add a little more. Uh, but I, I like it this way. I'm gonna be pouring my wax into this small pitcher and I like it a lot. It's small, but it's very precise and I don't make a mess when I pour. I am checking the temperature of my wax because according to my notes <laughs> and my previous testings, um, it's ideal to pour this wax between 120 to 165 Fahrenheit. Remember, this is not a 100% coconut wax. This is mainly soy with coconut wax. Uh, many coconut waxes require a higher pour temperature. This is not the case, but still. This is the time for me to be precise. I do this step on a scale. Uh, because each of these candles need to, needs to have precisely 110 grams of wax. Once the candles are poured, they need to stay still, cool down, solidify, and then we'll cut the wicks and we'll cap them. All of the candles are hard enough, so I removed the wick centering tool and I'm now gonna cut the wicks at around a quarter of an inch. If we take a closer look, the first candles that I poured were poured at a higher temperature and the texture is really nice and smooth. Now, as I moved along, um, the wax cooled a little bit more, but it was still above 120 degrees Fahrenheit, but it started to create a kind of a muddled or cauliflower <laughs> top texture. And then as we went down to the last ones, we have some nice frosting on top, uh, which is technically not bad but some people don't like the finished look of this so to fix this what we're gonna do I'm gonna take a heat gun and I'm gonna remelt my tops and then they're gonna dry nice and smooth The wax has re-solidified. As you can see now, the top of the candle is so smooth and so different than what it was just a couple minutes ago. Uh, I'm gonna now have a little uh, match game and try and find the right caps for my candles, but I took a picture right before making the candle, so I'll, that'll be easy. 
And then these will cure for about two days before we uh, ship them out. And I'm gonna apply the, the instructions and warning uh, labels. And I print these on my laser printer from my office. These are labels that I buy from online labels and then I laminate them just so that the text stays there so that you can read it if you need <laughs> and that it doesn't get damaged from being moved around on countertops or tables. So that secures the label and makes sure that the text stays in position as long as the candle will burn. So I'm just gonna apply in the center of all of my candles. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed to watch the process of how we make these little candles. They will be going into the advent calendar. Now this is only one batch. We have three different fragrances that may be in the calendar. We have vanilla and we also have clothesline. So you may not get the cranberry, uh, but these are our like top three sellers. So that's why we chose these fragrances to go in the calendar. And there's 12 full-sized product in it uh, all handmade here at La Fille de la Mer. So make sure to check out my website. It's www.lafidelamer.com. I'll leave all of the links down below because I don't know how well your French is going right now. So I'll uh, save you the trouble. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great holiday season. I know it's so early to talk about the holidays, but since many of these will be shipping out, I wanted to get these super early uh, so that they would have the time to reach my customers. Have a great day. Take care and I will see you soon.